Good morning, everybody. So today I thought I'd do something a little different. This is the first um, piece of machinery that um, I might do a little bit of a walk around on. So this is our case 895. Um, I bought this tractor about three years ago, two and a half, three years ago. Um, on Dundeel, it was in Fermanagh and um, it looked very very clean um, it was an old man that owned it from new uh, the man was in his late 80s and all he had used the tractor for was basically to drive in and out of Monaghan town um, he used to drive down to the local shop and back he didn't have a car he used to drive back and forth and um, to pick uh, to pick things up at the shop on the tractor rather than the car so she never seen any work whatsoever um, in fact, I went and had a look at her and um, I noticed, the first thing I noticed was she's on our original tyres. Um, she's, she's a 1991 and she's still on our original Goodyear tyres that would have come from the factory. This tyre here is worn down. Um, that's actually a tyre that was burst and he got a, a second hand tyre and put it on. It's completely worn down. The other one, the far side, is brand new. Um, but that one's worn down, that's, that's something that, that I'm going to replace. Not a big issue because, again, this tractor's not going to be doing huge pulling or anything like that. So a ball tire like that's not going to make a, an awful lot of difference to me. Um, but, yeah, uh, the levers, the, the lift arms, the PTO, everything was completely seized on it. Um, the stabilizers, completely done, they were completely seized solid. Um, there was no pin in the back for any attachment the whole back end you'd know just to look at it the pto was dry as a bone everything was just unused completely unused so i had to spend quite a bit of time oh several days of breaking everything down and freeing everything up but once everything did get freed up everything worked uh, everyone was flying um when we got her home i i give her a, a good service i changed everything that had to be changed and um, i went through her every nut and bolt just double checking that everything was okay because it was a tractor that didn't do any work and sometimes that isn't always good but she got enough of driving on the road um to keep her in good shape um there's four thousand six hundred hours on the on the on it so it was a nice wee bit um at the same time but uh, it was all driving he was driving it every day and um yeah his his son was also there and his son's a panel beater and he uh sprayed it he said uh, his father now, once I seen their place, I, I, I knew that they were very, very tidy people. Uh, so the father it got faded sitting outside. He showed me pictures of it um, and he, uh, before he resprayed it, but he done a very good job in respraying it. New stickers, new everything, and done the wheels. Every, everything is done. Um, it was really well done. So I was happy. Um, got her a very, very handy money. I'm not going to tell anybody what I paid because um, I don't think that'd be fair on the previous owner but but I got her a good money um, and I couldn't turn her down. So what did I do since I bought her? Um, very little. Uh, I tell you, I replaced panel window, side panel window, a stone fell from the mower and broke it. Um, I suppose I needed a spool valve. There was only one spool, a single spool valve on her so I needed to get an extra one so I could work the bale splitter because when she's, when she's not topping in the summertime the winter time her main job is to the bale splitter goes on we have a mikhail bale splitter and it um it be used all winter we'll be putting our bales in as you can see here uh, we draw them home with the big tractor and um we leave them in the yard and then we lift them up with this and put them in in front of the cows and split them so she's brilliant for that um but things i've done is i've added an extra spool valve not a spool valve it's electronic switcher so basically, um, I went looking for a, a, a kit, a second-hand kit. I couldn't get one new, believe it or not. But I looked um, around a, a few case dealers and scrap yards and a few different places and couldn't find a... Actually, could not find a, um, an extra spool valve for at the time. Um, they were all sold and all taken off every yoke I looked at. But our local dealer told me about this kit here and um, it, it, it it's brilliant. I'm very glad I bought it. I was skeptical at the time, but I fitted myself. I plumbed and done everything myself. I built a new chest valve holder here, 
um, and I put the four, the four valves together and the seven pin plug, I had to rewire a new seven pin plug on it because the other one wasn't there. It was just tucked in underneath the cab. Um, but basically what I have here in the dash is, I have one lever, one lever over there, and I have a button here on the dash that I wired. So when I push that button and use the lever while I'm holding that button, it'll work the other valve. And when I let go of the button, it will work the other one. So it's just a matter of, that just switches it over, electronically switched over. So it allows you to basically have two valves, two spool valves, um, working on that electronic switcher. So works perfect. Um, perfect for what we want it for. See now, was a couple of things. We put a couple, two LED lights on the top of the cab in the center. Um, yeah, uh, they give a good light. But unfortunately, the crowd is quite a bit. Not on the inside, but they yellowed in the inside. Um, within a couple of months of being on, and I didn't like that. Um, it spoils the look, and not just maybe getting the same light as them either. So, and they were good, a very good quality light that we put on. So, yeah, I was just disappointed with them, but still a good light. We re replaced the two headlights, and put two new headlights on it, and they were cracked. We, we rewired, all the lights had to be taken apart. Um, a lot of it had to be rewired because there was a lot of corrosion on the side lights and things and I rewired everything. That's something that I can do myself and, and um, put a bit of time into. Um, put a flasher, a LED flasher on the roof. Um, what else? Uh, I broke the windscreen. Um, I was topping, about a couple of weeks after we bought it, I was topping and uh, you see here, there's a bit of a mark here. Well. What was happened was the old screen was replaced um, by the previous owner and he um, the windscreen wasn't kept up enough. There was no wedges put underneath, obviously, when it was fitted. And that left it that the windscreen was actually fit, sitting on the metal frame housing here around the engine. So um, we hit a bump and the, these cases are very, very rigid. And we hit a bump and it completely smashed the windscreen. It just took a small bump in the field and the, it just acted like a wedge or like a sledgehammer hitting it from the bottom and it just shattered the windscreen. So had to get a new windscreen on. Um, as you can see, it's a, I don't know if the, the, the camera shows it well enough, but it's green glass. We couldn't get the, the kind of tinted glass that Case come with. It just was unavailable. Um, we couldn't find it anywhere. So Auto Glass was eventually who we settled with and the green was all we could get. Didn't like to have to put it on, but I wanted to keep it as original as possible, but we needed a windscreen, so it had to go on. Um, let me see we walk around the back. I fitted two LED lights here. Again, again, the same brand. Um, crowded. Only on about a year, around about a year and crowded as well. They worked perfect, but I just would have liked um, to have done without that corrosion. Um, so maybe a plastic housing would be better than the, that kind of whatever kind of cast stuff that it is. So yeah, I replaced the two tail lights. Um, two, there was two non-original tail lights put on. There were actually two trailer lights that had been put on. Uh, I took them off and put, got two of the originals. They weren't here, I think they were 12 euros each or something like that. And I got the two of them and replaced them just again, just to tidy that up a wee bit. So one evening I, I was coming out after milking and I just was locking up, locking up all the sheds and things, and I, I, I had all the tractors already put away, everything like that was done, but for some reason, um, I wasn't sure if I had let, left the electric fence on. I was after fixing up the electric fence that day at home, and I wasn't just too sure, um, and I wanted to double check whether I had turned the electric fence back on again or not. So I, uh, I went up into the machinery shed, and I obviously, I quickly realised that I had had it turned on, um, but when I was walking out of the machinery shed, I heard a noise. Just as I was about to close the door, I heard a noise, ever so slight. It was very, very slight, and that noise, I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. It was like a whirling wind noise. It, it was. I thought maybe it was a draft or something coming blowing in from the roof because there was a wee bit of wind that day as well. But I couldn't just figure out where it was coming from. But I narrowed it down into it to the, this tractor. Um, and I got up onto the tractor and the heater, the ignition was off, the tractor was completely um, switched off, but the heater had come on, on its own accord. 
and the heater was running at half, just at, at the first level, at its own accord. So I tried to turn it off and it wouldn't turn off. Ended up anyway, um, I had to get in underneath the cab and disconnect the battery um, to just to get it to turn off. So it was lucky because I know, I'm pretty sure that that would have caused a fire. Uh, absolutely positive that it would have caused a fire. Um, and the tractor was parked um, in, our, in our, our shed with the other tractor beside it and all the machinery in the one shed and lo and behold at the back of the shed there was 50 square bales of hay. So it would have been the perfect fire, it would have destroyed nearly all of our machinery if it had a wet up. Um, so my advice to you, um, I fixed the problem by the way, um, the whole wires up underneath the, da up underneath the, the cab were completely destroyed. Somebody had used block, household electrical block connectors um, and it was just a mess of what someone rooting at a radio or whatever was done, but it was just a mess. So I had spent two days rewiring the whole thing and using proper connector, connectors and soldering everything and, and using the right grade of wire and just completely clean it up. But, um, sorry, the calves come up here just to, just to join me. But uh, yeah, uh, so I'd advise anybody that has a tractor of their own, of any age, one thing to make sure you put on your tractor is a kill switch. And there it is. I fitted that afterwards. Every night the tractor's t turned off. Nearly every time I get out of her, and leaving her for any period of time she's turned off, you get into a habit of doing it, and then you'll do it. Uh, but I heavily advise, I've heard of so many local people that have had tractors born or nearly born. All because of not having a little switch that costs a few euro and only takes a few, half an hour, an hour to fit. Fit it anywhere, as long as it's in line with the battery. Um, and it will save your tractor and maybe save a lot more else that's in your shed along with your tractor. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's one thing definitely uh, I, would, I, would, I would recommend to anybody who has any tractor. Um, that's all. I fitted another little by here. She's a bit hard to start, so I fitted a little... Um, hand squeezing pump for the diesel and um, just to pump a little bit more diesel to her in the mornings give her two pumps the starter is a uh, starter is the original starter can't believe it but it is the original starter Um works fine but she's a hard tractor to start so we have checked the heater plug heater plugs fine we replaced it anyway but it was fine and working as it should so it's just a lazy starter we'll we'll change that for a high speed starter um, I'll put a high speed starter in it, they're, they're not overly expensive, they're quite easy to fit and we did that on a, on a 4270 that we had and it just made such a difference. So up into the cab, I also put a new alternator on, new battery um, and um, yeah that's, that's nearly most of the stuff we can think of outside. Inside, yeah she's not just as clean inside, she's got the electronic dash um, we were after washing it here the other day, we washed the insides and cleaned it out, but I'm going to have to, the dash is the only thing, and a bit around the cab is the only thing I didn't get to fully clean, but they'll upgrade the radio of course, you have to have a few beats, sunroof, everything opens, does as it should. Now a lot of mould inside, as you can see this side here, the camera maybe makes it look worse, but uh, there is quite a bit of mould, that, has to, that panel there is completely destroyed probably have to be replaced um, but that mould is just on this side is basically from the hole in the roof that wasn't addressed um, by the previous owner we we fixed it pretty much one of the first things I done was fix it but I just have to get around now to getting someone in and getting that all clean and see will it clean because there's no point in trying to replace all that uh, it cost it probably cost a small fortune this panel might and I think this panel is not too expensive we might pick one up second hand but um, yeah, that, that'll all have to be cleaned up. But they're pretty basic inside. You know, there's nothing. The only, I suppose if I get out here and, and, and uh, the only thing I dislike about her is the gear, the gear sticks. Um, gear sticks are pain in the backside. As they're on the left hand side and I just can't get used to them. Um, some people might love them, but I drove these tractors in previous farms um, that I've worked on and uh, there's no getting used to them. They're just, they're just awkward. They're an awkward design. It's, 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 it's you know, it, it kind of spoils the, the tractor because they had a perfect tractor, perfect little tractor. But I just hate that gear stick. The cover is completely gone. We took it off. Um, it was just 
getting in the way, it was stopping you from getting in gear, it was catching on everything, so I just cut it off completely and done away with it. We've had to do that, and I've had it, seen that done, sorry, on other tractors of the similar uh, model. Uh, everybody takes off that gear cover, because absolute nightmare. Um, it warps with the sun, the starts to crack open. It's just, you can get them to buy, but I wouldn't put one on. It's much easier just to, just to have it off and, and use it as it is. New seat is another new thing that's going to go on it soon. The seat is, um, yeah, she's a, she's an uncomfortable lassie. She's like riding a horse. So uh, at the minute, a big hump in the middle of it. But um, yeah, it's more or less, more or less it. And the engine is as sweet as a button on that tractor. Never has been touched. Um, as I say, we have it now almost three years and it has never given us one bit of trouble. And it's, it might look clean now and it look like a tractor. Maybe it's just a runabout, but it does a lot of work. When the mower's on and it's mowing all the time, every single day, it, it does a lot of work. Um, and, you know, it never let us down and it's so easy on fuel. It's incredibly easy on fuel. We look, we look after our machinery. I do all the service and, and, the, and the majority of the works myself. Um, and actually now today it's going home. That's why it has, has to be cleaned. When I get home, it's going to get an, um, an oil change greased up and just gonna basically check it over and top up the rest of the aisles and uh, the fuel filters are fine they don't need to be touched i usually do them every two years um we change the aisle once a year for the amount of hours that the tractor's doing once a year is definitely sufficient enough for for this um that's it uh, i can't tell you any more about much more about it i hope you found this uh video interesting it's, it's a good little tractor um a lot of people seem to catch their eye on it and they all seem to ask me about it and have a look all around it they're more interested in this one than than actually the Massey so I suppose um yeah it's it's whatever floats your boat um but yeah she is she is a great little tractor there's no doubt about it I can't brag her enough um if that gear stick was was in a better place I'd even love it more but <laughs> you can't have everything but uh, yeah thank you very much for watching this video um please hit subscribe if you haven't already um, please give us a like, uh, word them out, spread it around. Um, we'll have loads more videos to come. As you see the slant house in the background, well, tank in the background, nothing happening yet. It was to happen a couple of days ago, happening tomorrow, we're told. So um, yeah, there's going to be a movement on it now in the next few days. So yeah, loads to come. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.